Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see a pretty decent crowd. Uh, my name is Dan Norris, and I'm here with my colleague, Jonas Burgess. And we're here to talk to you today about uh, GitOps for the Edge, uh, delivering WebAssembly with Argo CD. Uh, so a quick overview of what we are going to cover for this session. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview, or actually my colleagues can give you a brief overview of what WebAssembly is, um, a brief intro to the CNCF project Wasm Cloud that we both work with, um, and then I'm going to go through how we integrated both Wasm Cloud and Argo CD. Um, we'll talk a little bit about kind of what that looks like and the why. Um, we'll also talk about uh, how we actually were able to extend some of those capabilities um, into Argo CD using a custom Kubernetes operator. Uh, and then I will go through a live demo of how all this sort of comes together um, by using Argo to drive a uh, deployment uh, using a Wasm Cloud application to over 30 plus edge locations. Um, just kind of demonstrate what all this looks like. All right. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Just making sure. Cool. Uh, how many of you are familiar with WebAssembly? Just getting a quick show of hands. Okay. There's a couple. Cool. How many of you are using WebAssembly uh, in production? We got one. All right, two. Nice. Yeah, I got a couple of things. All, right. All right. So um, WebAssembly is a uh, portable binary uh, format uh, for executing applications. Um, it originally was developed for browsers. Uh, it was essentially the idea was that uh, in order to build more complicated applications, more performant applications in the browser, uh, the, you use something like WebAssembly to be able to bring in foreign languages that are, or languages that are not JavaScript, uh, such as, you know, any number of languages. So you could use Rust, Go, C, things like that uh, to build very complex applications on the, on the browser side. Now, one of the interesting things about that is uh, because it's coming from a browser environment, uh, you know, it's a, the internet is a hostile place as you can probably, uh, if, as you probably figured out. Um, and so browsers, uh, they had a couple of things they had to get up, get right about WebAssembly. Um, first of all, because there's more than one type of browser, they needed to be the format for the format to be portable uh, across browsers. Uh, and because of the environment that it's running in, uh, it also needed to be secure. So the sandbox model that WebAssembly had to develop as a result of that is such that um, instead of taking capabilities away, like we do with containers in order to secure containers, uh, you, in, in the case of WebAssembly, you actually have to um, give it permissions. So the idea was that you write software once and then you can deploy it in any number of places as long as you can run web, WebAssembly. Um, and, and on top of that, because we are in browsers, uh, these applications also, there's a kind of a strong preference that these applications are small, right? Like if you have a desktop applications, application or a container, those tend to be in the hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes. Whereas in the uh, browser case, you can be downloading, let's say two gigabytes every time you're loading a web page. That wouldn't really work. So uh, in our demo application here, one of the components that actually is powering the demo is just 700 kilobytes. And so you can imagine that's quite a bit smaller than your average container, uh, for example. So. Um, before we kind of go further, uh, we do have to talk about a little bit about what's really exciting and interesting about uh, WebAssembly. Uh, so the idea with WebAssembly is that it is fine uh, fine-grained sandboxing. Uh, and the idea is that you essentially have what's called components. Um, so these components um, are the, they contain a core WebAssembly module. Right? This is where your business logic is for your application. But on top of that, these, uh, these uh, modules uh, also, or these components, sorry, also have the ability to define their imports and exports. Uh, and what this allows you to do, is essentially there's a, an interface that you define. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to compose together components or WebAssembly code that's written in different languages. As, as I mentioned earlier, you can compile any number of different uh, languages down to WebAssembly as a, as a uh, deployment target. Uh, and because of that, because of the interface driven uh, nature of WebAssembly components, you can compose those together. So you can imagine in this case, we have a Rust application that's exposing some set of functionality. So it exports that functionality. And then we have a Go-based application that actually is importing that functionality. So making use of that functionality. So these are, you can imagine you have basically two libraries or a library in Rust and a, a program in Go. And, and the Go uh, program is using code from the, uh, the Rust uh, library. And, and they don't need to know that they are written in two different languages because they are, have this shared interface that they're basically using as a way to uh, link together. 
So that's really cool. Um, so uh, before we dive in further, we should mention uh, Wasm Cloud as well. It's a CNCF project, and uh, it's an, essentially an application platform that's designed for you to be able to deploy and, and run uh, WebAssembly uh, components across cloud, edge, and so on. Uh, we have developed our own orchestrator uh, that helps us do that. Um, and uh, there's also an underlying everything uh, due to the distributed nature of wanting to be able to cross from cloud to edge. Um, we also have a, like a compute, seamless compute mesh powered by something called NATS, which is another uh, CNCF project. Um, really cool technology. I'm not going to go too much into NATS, but you'll see later was, as Dan goes through the demo, what that allows us to do essentially. Um, so just to kind of recap, what, what, what does all this mean? Why should you care? Um, so WebAssembly allows you to target any number of different environments as long as you can have a WebAssembly runtime, uh, which our project CMC, CNCF WASM Cloud actually embeds one of those uh, uh, called WASM Time. Uh, you can essentially run your workloads anywhere. It could be running on your smart fridge, could be running on the edge, could be running in the cloud. Uh, as long as you can execute uh, WebAssembly, you can, you can target it. Uh, and then Wasm Cloud takes that a little bit further by bringing the WebAssembly components aspect, which allows you to compose app, uh, software written in different languages together without them needing to know that they are different kinds of software. So that's pretty cool. And so that's kind of a whole lot of kind of maybe some uh, kind of novel tech. So you might be asking yourself, like, that's all great. You know, a lot of little maybe component things you're trying to squish together. Uh, how do you deploy any of that? And I bet you'll be shocked to know the answer because it's Argo. Um, so we ended up kind of spiking on this a while back. And um, we kind of set on Argo CD as a way to be able to deliver some of these applications, particularly for people who were already running Kubernetes. Um, because frankly, it's the, kind of the best in class GitOps tool that we've been able to find. There's obviously other good ones, right? Like Flux is solid. Um, but we kind of settled on Argo just because of the functionality. Um, and it really let us um, integrate our Wasm Cloud deployment um, and kind of the capabilities we already had uh, with tools that everybody in the ecosystem is already familiar with. So it kind of seemed like a no-brainer. Um, but how does it actually fit together? Because um, we mentioned that um, Wasm Cloud applications, you know, they're WebAssembly, they're kind of their own thing. Um, but the Wasm Cloud project actually ships um, with a, um, effectively it's a CRD. Um, it's actually just a YAML format, and we'll kind of, I'll show you a little bit what it looks like later, um, but it's based on this spec called the Open Application Model, OAM. Um, there are other projects in the CNCF ecosystem that use this, um, so it's kind of like a little bit of an application standard, um, but basically that allows us to plug into um, our own orchestrator that we had kind of written, um, because again, these things can run anywhere. They can be on Kubernetes, they can be on Nomad, they can be on bare metal, they can be on little IoT devices, who knows where, right? So we kind of needed something that was a little bit smarter to understand how to place those and how to move things around. Um, we've actually given a whole talk about this. I'm not going to go into it. If you're interested, it's on YouTube. I uh, gave it at uh, Wasm Day, actually, um, in Chicago this past year. Um, but because of having this YAML manifest, we can teach Argo basically how to use the Kubernetes API to manage and deploy these manifests as if they were any other CRD. It's none the wiser. Um, in order to do that, we had to write our own operator. Um, effectively, we had to implement the APIs underneath the hood to interact with Wadom so that when you apply this manifest in a cluster, it's actually able to take that and run the correct commands. Um, and so a little bit of a graphical illustration of what this might look like from a workflow perspective. So imagine like anyone else probably in this room, you might be running you know, some sort of um, project, right? You've got it all checked into Git, you check in this YAML manifest, right? Argo receives that event, right? It knows that, oh, hey, something changed in the manifest. You know, you've already provisioned that application just like you would any other Argo app. Um, but what happens, which is a little bit different potentially depending on what layers of the stack you're familiar with is um, Argo then um, basically syncs that CRD, so it's kind of out of the picture at that point, but this operator that we wrote actually takes over at that point and starts issuing commands to this Wadom uh, observer process, basically, that could be running kind of anywhere. It's like the lattice interconnection, um, and that starts relaying commands to all of the various, we call them Wasm Cloud hosts, kind of like kubelets, um, but that relays sort of start and stop commands to make sure um, that its own reconciliation loop is bringing everything to the forefront. All right, so Dan mentioned the operator. Uh, that is kind of a key component that we had to develop in order to make this uh, all work. 
Uh, we'd originally started down this path of developing an operator as a means to allow um, our customers to run uh, Wasm Cloud hosts on top of Kubernetes using just the CRD. Right? They could say, hey, I'd like to deploy a set of hosts um, and, and make sure that those, those are always running. Uh, so we developed the CRD for that. Um, and and the, as Dan mentioned, this uh, Wasm Cloud host, just for, uh, it, it, you know, for everyone's edification, is the, uh, our version of Kubelet, essentially. For, so it's a program that executes WebAssembly applications or WebAssembly components. Um, but in the process of doing this work, what we realized is that we could also use this as a way to bridge the gap between running uh, or issuing commands to run WebAssembly applications from within Kubernetes, um, because a lot of our you know, customers are already using GitOps tools like Argo. Um, and, and so they're asking us like, hey, rather than having to force myself into learning a new tool or using a different interface, can I just use you know, Kubernetes for this and, and Argo for this? And the answer is yes, turns out. Um, in, in our case, uh, because we're op op operating the WebAssembly uh, ecosystem, uh, we end up writing a lot of Rust because a lot of a lot of the um, you know platform is is written and is essentially in Rust. So we chose to go down the path of implementing this operator action in Rust. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like, uh, this is a little bit small view into it, but. Uh, you know, we can run kubectl get applications, and in this case, it, they, these are not Argo applications. <laughs> these are uh, Wad Wadam applications. So they are WebAssembly applications that are being queried from the uh, from the kubectl as if it was just another um, construct within the Kubernetes ecosystem. And um, just to prove that to you, here's a, a quick uh, just a snippet of the actual file that defines an application, and as uh, Dan alluded to earlier, it's using the OAM spe specification uh, and the application kind, uh, where we're just saying like, hey, this is an application, and you'll see later on a little bit more about what actually goes into this manifest, but just to prove that it is actually not an Argo application, but it's a WebAssembly application. So, um, Argo and op the operator, like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we wrote this in Rust, and so, um, when, when you're writing software in, in, in Rust, one of the things you'll quickly learn is that uh, it's, it's kind of off the beaten path, especially in the Kubernetes ecosystem. There are some benefits to doing this approach. Um, we, we are using a, uh, a Kubernetes-focused uh, library called kubrs, which essentially allows you to inter operate with, uh, interop with the operator framework, or like with the operator constructs, uh, but also very easily define things like CRDs by um, using macros instead of having to do the code generation uh, that you end up using in some like Go, uh, which is, which is, so there's some benefits to it, but there's also a lot of um, lessons learned there. Um, so one of the things we, at the time when we were implementing this, one of the things we ran into actually was um, Argo uh, was, it was, maybe still is, uh, requires you to present an open API v2 endpoint for the resources uh, that it wants to talk to. Uh, as opposed to Open API v3, which seems to be where where the Kubernetes project is moving. Uh, so, uh, when you're in the Go space, controller runtime actually takes care of this. Uh, controller runtime being one of the popular frameworks for building uh, operators or controllers in, in uh, for Kubernetes, uh, and that's really nice. But unfortunately, in Rust, we don't have such an equivalent thing, and the Rust ecosystem specifically is not super keen on Open API v2. Uh, so there was, there's a little bit of a here be dragons exercise left for the reader type of thing uh, that we learned. Um, the other thing that you have to be aware of is you, or at least in our approach, we had to end, ended up having to create an aggregated API server uh, because we're talking to a system that's external to Kubernetes. Uh, so that was another detail that was a little bit of a learning exercise. So that's all just to say this is not necessarily the, the uh, you know, easy mode, easy path, but um, going through this exercise was actually really valuable because we learned a lot more about the internals of the system and how Argo interacts with the, with the underlying platform. So there's definitely some benefits to it. It's just that, you know, if you want to go down this path, there's, it's a little bit of like a, you know, choose your own adventure, if you will. All right, so we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you um, a demo actually of all this kind of uh, being fit together. Um, and so what I'm gonna show you is using Argo CD to um, deploy an application, right, with a YAML manifest stored in a Git repo, so your normal Git ops sort of based workflow. Um, the difference is we're going to use, um, it's a Wasm Cloud application, so we're going to deploy it to over 30 edge locations running in a cloud platform called uh, fly.io. 
um, just really quick, easy sort of cloud to work with. Um, so to give you a little bit of a sense of what the application is that we're going to be deploying, um, this is going to be a uh, Watson Cloud-based application, right, um, running on a host. I've already pre-provisioned these just for, the, for time's sake. They spin up pretty quick, but, you know, demos and whatnot. Um, but what's going to happen is I'm going to navigate my browser to a page that's going to be hosted out of basically um, some of these Wasm components. And so it's a little, the architectures may be a little bit different than you might be kind of thinking of when you think of just kind of like one binary kind of throw it somewhere. Um, because uh, we're actually running three different components to serve this application. So on the right side, when I uh, navigate my browser, there's a um, distinct component um, called the HTTP server provider, which is providing that capability of being able to receive and relay HTTP um, responses and requests right to um, the outside world. The actual business logic of this application is kind of implemented in this like hello actors, kind of what I called it. Um, what that does is it receives the request which is an HTTP request, and it's going to go through and generate a web page kind of on the fly. And what it's actually going to do is it's going to show what region this particular web page is actually being served from. But it knows nothing about that, right? It actually does not have the capability to make an external call on its own or to, you know, read something from the file system. We didn't give that it that capability. What it does is it effectively makes an RPC call to another capability what I call the fly.io metadata provider, very clever naming. Um, and that basically gives it the response of like, hey, this is your region. You know, this is a little bit about sort of where you're running. The actor then basically packages that together in a website and sends that out. So all this happens really quick. Again, these are all really lightweight. That hello actor is 700 kilobytes of code compiled. Um, so it all is like uh, pretty straightforward and, and or pa nicely packaged, I should say. Uh, so with that out of the way, hopefully that's a decent enough overview. I'm going to actually go through and we're going to walk through this together. So I went ahead and as I mentioned, um, this is our cloud platform just because it's like easy to demonstrate. Um, so I went ahead and pre-populated um, a whole bunch of Wasm Cloud hosts in Flat.io um, running. So this particular one here, right, I've labeled them with where they're running just to distinguish them. So this is running uh, CDG, that's the airport code. This is actually somewhere in Paris, hopefully. I actually don't know where it is, but it's definitely in France. Um, so you can see, as I zoom out, these are all the various hosts that are kind of wired in all at the same time kind of into this Wasm Cloud cluster. Um, so we're going to end up com connecting to this one just due to the way that Fly.io's um, edge um, handling logic works, because uh, they try and route you to the nearest place. So. I also have Argo running. Um, this is Argo running basically on my laptop in a little kind cluster. And so what I'm going to do is um, I am going to, let me apply it, uh, Argo. Um, we're just going to deploy um, just an Argo application, right? So uh, this is a repository. It's online. I'll, the link is going to be at the end. Um, but just, it's an application uh, that I already have running out of GitHub, right? Um, just happen to give it a path to where this YAML file is um, being served out of. Hopefully that's big enough. If it's not, make some noise and I'll, I'll make it bigger. Um, but, you know, straightforward application here, right? So um, that's already shown up, right? You can see it's just been applied into the cluster. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to just click sync, right? No reason not to have done the automated sync. It just was easy for the sake of demo purposes for you to, to see it all kind of go live. So that was about as quick as it really needed to go. Um, to be able to relay that command. Now, what did this deploy? The, what it actually is managing, whoops, not cargo, because uh, I can type live, um, it is managing this OAM manifest, right? I'm not going to go into the details of like sort of all the different fields because you can uh, read about that on your own, but if you look at this on the surface, right, this it is effectively just a CRD, right? Actually, Kubernetes reads this as if it were a CRD. We register the type and all that stuff, so it is literally one. Um, you know, it's got, it's a kind of application, it's an OAM spec, um, you know, it's got a name, and the other thing that to take away from this, right, is it's deploying a series of components. Um, whoops. <laughs> Doing it. This is what happens when you do it live. Um, so it's deploying three different pieces, right, that hello actor here, um, if you scroll down a little bit further, um, this HTTP server capability that I mentioned, right, that's being served as just its own asset, and then that metadata component. So these are the three different pieces that compose my app, and Argo was able to um, stream that out, right? So going back to my browser, if I just navigate to, oops, uh-oh. 
it's the risk of doing it live. Check the U, uh, UI. Yeah. Let's see, it should, no, it's, seeing, it's up, it's doing its thing. Um, I think it just hasn't quite fully synced everywhere because when you have 30 locations, it takes a little while to sort of turn through. Um, it's probably, I think it just needs to finish deploying all that. Maybe it works. There we go, look at that. Just needed a little bit of time. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you bearing with me. So this is being served from that actor component, right? It's telling us that it is running out of the CDG region. And to prove to you that this is running in multiple places, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, um, using TailScale, fantastic service by the way, um, to connect to an exit node I have set up um, somewhere else, and it's running out of Germany. Um, but if I refresh this page, you see that it's just now serving traffic out of Amsterdam. That's a property of Fly. I didn't actually do any of that. They kind of have this whole edge routing thing. Um, but again, this is the same application being served out of all these various different data centers, right? And we used Argo to, whoops, didn't want to do that. Um, we used Argo, right, to just one click deploy that. So that's as easy as it really can get, really. Um, so if you want to learn more, and I knew this was interesting, right, um, we are, I mean, we're Cosmonic. We have a, our own booth, uh, K37, on the um, uh, sponsor showcase. Um, but we have a couple other things going on throughout the conference, right? So we, um, the Wasm Cloud project, uh, soon to be incubating CNCF project, please. Um, <laughs> that is, uh, we're going to have our own session um, on Wednesday. Uh, what is that, three to eight? Um, uh, also, we have um, kind of like an intro to WebAssembly components um, being put on by our colleague Brooks um, and someone else, uh, Michael Yuen from the Wasm Edge team. Um, that's another CNCF open source project. So highly encourage you to check that out. Um, if you want to know even more, we've got some, you know, a lot of resources to use online, right? Um, the open source project page is wasmcloud.com. You know, read through the docs and kind of learn a little bit more about um, what that is, if that's interesting to you. Um, we also have a blog post that also gives, goes through kind of at a high level some of the things that we talked about today um, with Argo CD and, and uh, Wasm Cloud. Um, if WebAssembly itself is interesting to you, um, definitely check out the Bytecode Alliance. They're the industry group that's sort of pushing the standards forward. There's like, I don't know, 30, 40 different members, like big names you've heard of. Um, it's a good group. And then if you want to see the code for what we deployed today, um, it's on GitHub, uh, github.com, protocron, which is my username. Uh, Argo CD D demo, but you know you can pull the slides and should be able to click the links later. Um, with that, I think that's all we had. So we're open to questions. We'll be standing over here, and we'll be outside if you have any anything else you want to know. Thank you for your time.